this video is to show the demo for our RC6 encryption and decryption algorithm um, in BHDL. Um, we're running this in uh, Bravado. Uh, we wrote the algorithm, um, we wrote a few different files. We have the encryption uh, portion of the algorithm here. This will obviously encrypt any plain text and then we have the decryption file <coughs> which is uh, basically the same as the encryption um, code just uh, in reverse pretty much. Um, this obviously decrypts that um, encrypted uh, text. And then we have our key expansion code. Um, this code we actually borrowed from someone on GitHub. Um, we did find it there and it was open source and available to use. Um, we did give credit to this person in our report. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the first simulation which is gonna be the encryption. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Um, we did write a few different test cases here. Uh, these are going to be the plain text is going to be the input. This here is the input plain text. These are the different inputs that we provided, and the block output obviously is what we expect to see. Um, here, are the ciphertext, what we expect to see after we run the encryption. So, the first one I'm going to test is this one here. So the way we ran this simulation is um, we did struggle a little bit to run this in the way that we learned in class using a test bench simulation. Um, we figured out a different way. We found this online and found that this seemed to work a lot better for what we were trying to do with our code. So we have basically this TCL script that we wrote. Um, and I can just tweak this portion of it here to whatever inputs we want. And back in here. Go ahead and run this. Let me close out this one and run it again. So to run it, we just go here up to tools and we run the TCL script to select the encryption TCL file. Just give it a second and it'll show us the results. So we expect this input and this output. So as you can see here, these are inputs A, B, C, D. It's basically these here broken up into four registers. And then these are the outputs, A out through B out. And as you can see, it does match. So it looks like that part of the code is working. Uh, let me run it again using different test case. Uh, I can run this one here. Again, this should give us, uh, for the input, it's just the series of zeros, and this should be our expected output. So, yep, looks like it worked as we expected. All the inputs are zeros, and then this is our output. So now I'm going to demo the, the decryption part of it basically decrypt what we just encrypted. Just need to set this on top. changes to the one that we just ran. So now we expect to see this as the input 
and this should be our output. So as you can see, that worked. Input our this array here, and our output is just a bunch of zeros. So that's working as planned. Um, so unfortunately, we did try to implement this on our FPGA board. Um, we were having some issues um, getting it to work on the FPGA board. It seemed like every time we would tweak our code uh, to try to get it to work, we ended up breaking something in our code, and we really wanted to implement the VHDL and get it to work and actually do what it's supposed to. Um, the issue that we were primarily getting was, as you can tell here, our input and output was at 185% utilization. Um, so that was the main error we were receiving. Um, as you can tell, everything else, all the other resources, LUTs, uh, uh, flip-flops, everything was pretty good. Um, it was just mainly this input and output. Um, we tried, like we said, several different uh, methods and we couldn't get it to work. Um, we only had 210 IO available and we used uh, about 388. So um, we do hope to try to get this to work in the future. Um, we did enjoy working on this project and we do hope that we can get this to work because we would like to see it um, prototyped on a FPGA. Um, apart from that, um, yeah, it looks like this is, these are, this is here the uh, number of LUTs and the flip-flops that we used. Um, and the project did synthesize, as you can tell here, it's just as soon as we ran the implementation is when it failed. Uh, but again, we do hope to try to get this to work in the near future.